Welcome to FIO on the Air, the voice of the festivals and events industry in Ontario. Please welcome our CEO and your host, Dave McNeil. Hello and welcome to FIO on the Air. Today we're talking about Carabram, which is happening July 7th, 8th and 9th in Brampton. And here to talk about it, we've got Kathleen Douglas, who is a board advisor for Carabram. Welcome, Kathleen. Thank you so much. So for those that don't know, uh, Carabram is a multicultural festival, but can you talk a little bit about its roots and origins in the community? Thank you so much. Yes, Carabram started in 1982 to celebrate the diverse ethnic communities of Brampton. And the festival just four pavilions to 12 pavilions, plus now we actually have a pavilion of cultures. So over the years, I've seen great changes and fluctuations and who participates and what they're offering and some pavilions have been with us since the very beginning. And, and it's, it's spread over the community or is it all in one place? Uh, how does that work? Good question. Actually, with the support of the city of Brampton, we are primarily in community halls and arenas. And so there's probably about uh, 10 different locations that you can visit the pavilions. Some of them are standalone pavilions. Some of them are combining a couple of pavilions, such as um, Hawaii and uh, India, for example. But our culture of uh, our pavilion of cultures actually has a number of small cultures who really just don't have the manpower, the support to have their own pavilion. And and can you talk about the different pavilions? What each one's about? Sure, we have a number of pavilions and they are, they range from the very large ones such as the, uh, the Italian and the Chinese and the Hawaiian. And then we can go to some of the smaller ones and I'm really pleased to see that this year, for example, after a few years absence, we have Scotland back to join us. For a number of years, we've had good support from a lot of the communities who represent our, our own community, our, our Brampton community, which is a very diverse community. So when you visit a pavilion, for example, let's say you're going to visit the Caribbean pavilion, you might walk in there and after you give them your passport, which is for sale for $10 for those full three days, you will walk in and you'll hear lots of great music, the scents and the smells of the food is just great. There'll be entertainment and that goes on various times during the day so that you can really get immersed into the culture. You feel like you've visited that culture or that country. And how does your passport system work? Can you talk a little bit about the passports? Yeah, a three-day passport is $10. Uh, for those 12 years of age and older, well, younger children can just enjoy free admission. So basically, for the, the passport, the $10 per person, you get to visit every pavilion. You go in and you give your passport to the, the, the uh, volunteers at the front desk. They stamp it and you just go inside and then just enjoy. Have a beverage, try some food, watch the entertainment, look at the displays, and just feel as if you know a little bit more about that culture or that country. And are the passports good for the entire weekend or can you just buy one day or single days? How does that work? It's a three-day passport. So once you buy the passport, you can attend all three days, one evening, one full day. It's entirely up to you. It's a, um, a buffet of delights that you can purchase for that three-day passport. And uh, are there's food and beverages and in all of yes. the different uh, cultures and... Yes, and actually that's one of the things that attracts a lot of people because you have really authentic food that is being prepared by volunteers and caterers and they really reflect the culture of that country. Very often there's detailed information about the food, the origin of the food, where it got started, um, what spices they used in there, for example, so that you not only can enjoy tasting the food, which is always a wonderful experience, and I guarantee you you're probably about two kilos heavier at the end of the weekend because you enjoy all this food and some of the beverages, but you really get a sense that you've tasted a little bit of that, um, the food that represents that culture, that speaks loudly about that culture. And I personally am uh, one who enjoys all the food and likes to try lots of little bits. So many of the pavilions offer sampling plates where they'll have a couple of samples of the types of food they have rather than a big meal. Although sometimes you can have a full plate of food, which is just great. And when we have our, our we have uh, judges who judge the, uh, the pavilions, and we have two judges who specifically judge food, and they will be looking not only at how the food is prepared, and is, it, is the preparation area clean, but is it tasty, is it attractive, is it well explained? So all of the judges will have different criteria 
to be um, to offer their opinions on not only how to um, perhaps improve a little bit, but to acknowledge the great work that the volunteers and the pavilions do. And the the event is it a fully family friendly event, or are there adult programs in the evening, or how does that work? Thank you for asking that. That's a good question. It's very very. It's actually geared to families. So that uh, not only are all the venues totally accessible for anyone, but with the children's um, opportunities, there's quite often children's programs. You might go into a pavilion and there'll be an area where there's coloring books or there's some things, some games that they can play or there's some activities. And very often, certainly in my experience, the entertainment will quite often ask children to come up and join them on stage to really enjoy and be part of it so that they're engaged. And that's really what festival and events are about, right? Is, yes. is celebrating cultures, whether it's music and entertainment, or if it's food and dance, and it's bringing them all together. And exactly, it's that's a exactly. it's a great event. Um, Kathleen, what did you guys do during the COVID period to keep uh, people engaged, uh, whether if it's volunteers or staff, throughout the process? Well, as we all know, particularly in the not for profit sector. It, the pandemic was a challenge for a lot of groups. Obviously, we did not have an in-person event, but during the weekends of the planned um, event, the festival, we would put things on our social media to remind people about the event, previous videos, for example, some information about the different cultures, just to remind people that Caribram is taking a little bit of a hiatus, like everyone else, but we will be back uh, very proudly. So we were actually very happy to have our first in-person last year in 2022. And were you able to keep your volunteer base engaged? Has it been an issue getting more volunteers or do the different communities really come together and, and provide the, the volunteers for their own pavilions and, and things like that? As we know in the not-for-profit sector, the charity sector, the challenge with volunteers is that those volunteers we've had volunteering for many, many years, the habit was broken. So, they, they, so of course, any organization is still struggling, whether it's sports organizations, festivals, um, hospitals, still struggling to get the volunteer base back. But what's interesting about Parabram is that each pavilion recruits its own volunteers from its community. Although we do have some summer students uh, or to, uh, students who want to get their community hours in. But I think the, the challenge is that we rely on the pavilions to speak to their own communities about how they want to be represented. And so each pavilion has its own volunteers. The Carebram volunteers basically are the board of directors and people who are just helping to organize. And I think that's important to remember that because we are such a, a, a city with rich community commitment, that many of the, the pavilions still have some of the same volunteers that they had before, as well as recruiting newer and younger people. And I think that's exciting because that bodes well for that culture to be able to share in the future. We're not relying on the old gray hairs of us who have been doing this for a lot of years. We need to keep uh, sustainability through the young people. And the Brampton area is a very diverse area. Yes, Do you get a lot of people from uh, out of town coming into to Carabram and, and going through the different pavilions? In my experience, we do have a lot of people who come to Brampton just to visit Carabram, even if it's just for the Saturday. When you combine our farmer's market, which is held on Saturday morning in downtown Brampton at Gage Park, with the afternoon festival that starts at noon, it's a very good um, evolution to be able to just go to the farmer's market, enjoy that, purchase some, some produce, and then go and enjoy the festival um, activities that are being done by the pavilions. Absolutely. And I think it's because it is something that's unique. I, I remember back in, oh my gosh, this is going to age me, but I'm going to be honest about this. In the late 60s, early 70s, where Caravan, which was what started this all off, was in Toronto. And I don't even know that they have Caravan anymore, but I know that when we have um, had other events, we've had people and we asked them, you know, I just out of curiosity, where are you from? And some people will come from quite a ways away. Some people will just be out on a day. Let's say, oh, this is, you know, it's a drop in because of course you could purchase the uh, passports at the pavilions themselves if you don't have one ahead of time. So I think we get a combination of a lot of people who live in Brampton, a lot of people who are close by, and then some people who actually make the special trip as a destination event. 
And a lot of communities have multicultural festivals, a lot of them in, in community parks and stuff like that. I like the idea of the pavilion. Um, with your passports and going pavilion to pavilion, if you wanted to see all of them, like how much time would you think to to go through each and and, and get a, a reasonable assessment and see everything that they have to offer? <laughs> well, there are people who can zip through all of them in one day. You really don't get a true sense of that culture by just popping in and popping out. So one of the things that we do note in the passport is the times of the entertainment. So that quite often is a big draw for people, and they'll try and time it so that they can actually see that particular entertainment. And I would say if you really want to really spend some time, and I would say, you know, let's say even an hour at a pavilion to see the entertainment, to taste the food, to walk around and look at the displays, I think you could probably do the whole, uh, all, the, all the pavilions in, in the whole weekend. Certainly, I mean, depending on transportation and if you're driving or if you're walking or biking, that makes a bit of a difference because the community centers are spread out over the city. But I think it's quite reasonable to say if you did it on a, a Saturday afternoon and a little bit of a Sunday afternoon, you'd probably get most of the pavilions in. And does uh, does Brampton offer transportation through all of, or is it just like your uh, transit that uh, does do stops to each of the different communities? We have only the Brampton transit that's offered its regular routes. There aren't any particular special routes, which we used to do in the past, but I think it got to be unwieldy for the city to do that. And uh, maybe also, I, I really don't know, but I would guess too that maybe they didn't find it was used as much as they thought it would be. So now people will rely on it. Basically, I'd say most people attend uh, with their cars. Yeah. And, and for those that, that didn't have vehicles, like are there enough that are in a close proximity that it's a, a good walk? Or Yes, yes. And all the major um, pavilions are in large um, sport complexes or recreation centers. So they're all on the major bus routes. Sometimes at, at intersections, they make it very easy to access. So the, um, the dates again for this year's uh, festival at Carabram? July 7th to 9th, which is the weekend after next. Although at, on Saturday, July the 1st, I know it's a holiday, but we will be featuring an, a sample of the entertainment at Gage Park during the farmer's market. So anybody who's just kind of curious about that, wants to check it out, can get a little bit of a sample of the talent that's being offered through some of the different pavilions. And that's always very exciting to see and also very uh, encouraging to see people stop by and watch the entertainment and get excited about Carabram. We will be selling our passports during the farmer's market next weekend. And the, the festival uh, website is, is very well done, and there's a lot of information yes. in there. For people that want to check it out and get more information, where should they go? I would say to go to the uh, Carabram website. Um, we have a lot of social media presence this year, particularly on Facebook, where each of the pavilions have offered some information about their pavilions, what they're going to offer. So our social media presence this year has been outstanding. And so I would say just go to the website, have a look around. I think you can also go to one of the Visit Ontario. There's some different things. I'm sure FEO has some information. There's lots of places to find out about it or just check in with the city of Brampton. And I'm going to put you on the spot here. If you were to pick three of your top pavilions that are must-sees, what would they be? Well, if you like entertainment, the Hawaiian Pavilion always offers remarkable entertainment. Just watching uh, people of all ages dance and enjoy the music is quite wonderful. I happen to really enjoy some of the food from the East. So, of course, the Chinese Pavilion is really wonderful. I would say that uh, one of the pavilions that has been the most successful in the past and has grown is really the Elam Pavilion, which talks about the um, from South, uh, South, South India and Northern Sri Lanka. And it is a pavilion that offers amazing history and a wonderful display. I usually spend about half an hour just going through the display. So I learned so much more about that pavilion, that particular culture. So I think it depends what you want. If you're looking for food, they all have great food. There's some smaller pavilions this year. We have actually Nepal, which was part of the Pavilion of Cultures last year, has its own uh, pavilion this year because they were so successful. And to try Nepalese food, I mean, where else would you get the opportunity unless you're traveling extensively? And again, just a uh, last thought for those that are thinking about coming. Uh, what's your sales pitch? And just remind people about the dates again. 
I would think that July 7th to 9th gives you an opportunity to travel internationally without having to leave Brampton, to get a taste of the culture, to enjoy all the accoutrements of what every country and culture offers, but also just to be part of a community event that's so rich and has won several awards. Actually, we were the last the, uh, the top festival. Uh, the Caravan Multicultural Festival was uh, the uh, Brampton's uh, uh, Guardian Readers Awards, and we celebrated the 40th anniversary last year. So there's lots of reasons to celebrate. Fabulous event. I've been going for to say probably the best part of 30 years, and it never gets old. And you made a really good point there. For people that are thinking about traveling the world, and you know, you can see it online, but it's a chance to go and get a real taste of, of what the different countries have to offer, both culturally, food, entertainment, uh, all Absolutely. in one place. Absolutely. And what's really nice is that I'm hoping that people would go and say, gee, you know, I'd like to learn a little bit more about that. Or maybe that's a country I never thought of visiting. And I think that's what we also want to do is not only celebrate the diverse ethnic communities of Brampton, but to encourage people to explore some of those cultures and understand a little bit more, particularly in today's world where understanding is the key to a, a lot of uh, wellness and health and kindness. Well, thank you very much, Kathleen Douglas from Cara Bram. She's a board advisor. Again, Cara Bram happens in Brampton, July 7th, 8th, and 9th. If you want more information, go to their website. Um, buy a passport and enjoy a fabulous weekend of food and entertainment and uh, really a, a three-day trip around the world. Thank you very much, Kathleen. Okay, thanks for asking. I'm Dave McNeil. We'll see you next time on FEO on the Air. Thanks for listening to FEO on the Air, the voice of festivals and events in Ontario.